Godard, as some of you may know, was not only a filmmaker, but also a film theorist. And in fact, he arguably came to be a filmmaker through being a film critic. Uh, one of the sources for Godard's film theory, among many, was a rejection of a kind of essentialist tendency in Batsine, which gave film a kind of metaphysical or, uh, aura, uh, and Batsine suggested that the relationship between reality and film could possibly be total, which is to say, as I understand it, that the spatial and temporal elements found in film could, if not replicate reality, have a very strong connection to it, which would be an ideal for Batsine. Um, and one of the reasons why it was ideal for Batsine is uh, because in something like The Long Shot, for instance, um, film could include all of the massive spatial and temporal elements and all of the ambiguity that goes along with it um, and make it infinitely interpretable, which is the case with reality. Now, in response to this idea, Godard objected, uh, not necessarily with the ideas per se, but just the idea that film was something for abstract notions. Um, According to Guitar, film is simply not for metaphysical recreations of time and space that you know make people ch scratch their chins as they contemplate the nature of reality. No, Godard thought that film was uh, something that could use actual circumstances or events or even just simple themes and characters to drive a visual presentation. So in other words, the subject of the story is the motive for the mise-en-scene. And there's a really intense relationship here between form and content. There's no system, as in much traditional filmmaking, which obeys certain eyelines and shot-counter-shot -shot relationships. Instead, Godard thinks film is perfectly suited to finding the you know, ideal or correct presentation for the issue at hand when it comes to theme, plot, and character. Something about the story itself or the argument uh, or the theme will dictate how it needs to be uh, best visualized. Now, another interesting thing here is that Godard does not want us to distinguish between documentary and fiction in the way that we're accustomed to doing. Or rather, he says that films are always both documentary and fiction at the same time. So for Godard, in, co in contrast to Batsine, you, get, you can give a real impression of reality in, the, in a way that documentary can, but even the most rigid documentary will have an element of fiction. And for a good example of this, I would recommend seeing a documentary called Horns and Halos. Um, this, uh, it, it, this idea of it having a fictional element that Godard is talking about is very clear because the film makes very superb use of the Aristotelian principles of dilemma, crisis, decision and action, and so forth in a very deep way, um, in a way that has no correspondence to reality. You know that the filmmakers took their raw footage um, and the visual and auditory data that they had collected, and they edited it so a way that it uh, resonates with the classical plot structures um, that were described thousands of years ago. Um, and Horns and Halos is by no means the only documentary to have done this. Um, but the idea being, I think, that Godard is getting at is that you can't put together two bits of film and not fictionalize it in some way. And when you take a whole bunch and create uh, a narrative scope, then there's definitely going to be uh, storytelling elements that uh, come into play. Now the other end of the scale is that just as even the most fictional film will have an element of documentary, because shooting a thing, even in the context of fiction, is to document it, no matter how much artifice surrounds that uh, that process, there will always be a kind of documentation going on. And to me, this raises the question of advanced CGI films, like say Toy Story, uh, where the camera is not really in evidence, it's not really in play anymore. There's the notion of a camera that's framing things, but this is all built into computer. And in that sense, there isn't that kind of documentation going on. There's almost a more total sense of fiction. Um, you get documentation on the DVD special features, where you'll then have a traditional camera interviewing people, showing the actors at work, etc. Uh, one could only really speculate how Godard, or Batsine for that matter, would have theorized these kind of virtual films we have today with respect to these issues. I think Godard's concep conception would probably win out over Batsine, uh, because what is a computer animated film other than a collection of mise-en-scene that are dictated entirely by plot and character and theme.